Welcome to the Heimdall Rule List Introduction. A rule list is simply an ordered list of actions that are to take place on particular matching queries. A rule list is attached to a virtual database to specify how queries should be handled through that virtual database. We will be explaining the behavior of the rule list, how to edit and manage rules, and provide a high level overview of some of the most common rule types as generated by the setup wizard. Detailed explanations of other actions will be discussed in detail in follow-up videos. First, in order to add a new rule, use the blue button at the bottom of the page after using the Create New Rule List or selecting an existing rule list. The rule be, will be placed at the bottom, but rules can be reordered by dragging them. Rules are processed in the order that they are listed and a rule matching later in the list can be over can override parameter values appearing earlier in the rule list. This allows a more specific rule to override a less specific rule, for example, to adjust cache TTLs on specific queries. Each rule is composed of several components. <clears throat> One, the enabled state. If disabled, the rule will not be used for processing, but it can remain in the list to be enabled later. The second piece is the regex field, which dictates which queries will match. There are additional non-regular expression patterns that can be used as well in order to match metadata associated with the query, as documented in the help. The third field is the in-trans or in-transaction checkbox and determines if the rule should be applied in a transactional context or not. Often, a rule such as a cash rule should not be enforced when in a transaction. This checkbox allows this to be easily controlled. The action field controls what behavior should apply to the query and will adjust what parameters are allowed with a rule. Finally, there are many other different parameters that affect the behavior of the action. Some parameters are available on all rule types, but others are specific to individual rules. The blue edit button allows an individual rule to be expanded into a window, allowing easier editing. Within the edit window, there are additional options. The first is the notes field. This allows comments to be added to the rule, and when a comment exists, a small note indicator will become visible next to the enabled button for that rule. Hovering over the note will then show the actual comment. Additionally, in the rule edit window, additional parameters can be added using the blue checkbox and then selected from the drop-down uh, listing. Commonly used rules are able to be automatically generated via the configuration wizard. These include a log rule, cache rule, and the evaluate plan rule, along with a few others. The log rule specifies that matching queries are to be logged for analysis. This will be explored later in a uh, future video. The default cache rule is a generic cache all rule that will attempt to safely cache any and all queries. This rule by default does not set the in-transaction flag, so any query that may be impacted by the SQL mode will not be cached. More details on the behavior of the cache subsystem will be reviewed in a follow-up video dedicated to caching. The next commonly used generic rule is the evaluate plan rule. This will trigger the capture of the query plan once an hour for any query being executed through Heimdall and allow it to be exposed via the analytics tab. Options for this rule type include how frequently the plan should be captured and how slow a query must be to trigger the plan extraction. <clears throat> In environments where a read-only database URL is available, such as with Amazon Aurora, a reader eligible rule may be created by default as well by the wizard. This allows control of what queries may be routed to the read-only URL. A follow-up video will discuss this action in more detail as well. 